Welcome to Plumbline. My name is Bernie Lutchman and uh, Plumbline is a show about biblical truth and today we're going to deal with a foundational truth. And before we get into that, I'd like to tell you a story about a baseball player back in the 1930s called Goose Goslin. Goose Goslin was, a, uh, was an outfielder with the Washington Senators and played with the Yankees for a while. And um, in the World Series, uh, he, he was up uh, last man. The game was, uh, it was three to two, Washington. He was up, he was the last batter up. And, he, and when he came up to the, to the plate, he swung. And it looked like the ball was going out of, out of the park. Goose, uh, the crowd was going wild. It was a whole entire crowd that were going wild. Goose started rounding the bases and he came home. Home run, or so they thought. All of a sudden, there was a hush across the stadium in Washington as uh, the umpires got together in midfield and started dis discussing something. Finally, one of the umpires came out and said, ladies and gentlemen, the home run you just thought you saw was not a home run. Goose Goslin did not, st did not touch first base. So uh, the team went on to lose the, uh, the game because he didn't touch first base. Now that's critical because touching first base is, is really important to what we're going to talk about today. Most of America, uh, most Americans in fact say, uh, think or say they're Christians. And, and in fact, while America was founded as a Christian nation, most Americans are just professing Christians. And I felt burdened in the past, uh, over the past summer and the past few months to talk about this. Because in these last days, a lot of God's people seem to be a little adrift. And it got people gravitating to all kinds of books and fads and, uh, and movements and straying away from the pure, mur the pure milk of the Word of God. And for, and for some good reason. Um, there's a really popular church in Chicago called Willow Creek up, up in uh, Barrington, Illinois. And it's run by a gentleman named Bill Hybels. He started a movement about 25 years ago called the seeker-sensitive movement. And he admitted this year, he admitted, and this was after the, there's about 16,000 churches in the Willow Creek Association, that his method of, uh, of, of the church movement has failed to make disciples of Christ. It, it, in, a, in, a, in a word, it was uh, five miles wide and one inch deep. Now, what is a disciple of Christ? And what does this have to do with American Christianity? Plainly put, we're not disciples. We haven't even touched first base, a lot of us. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verses 24, right on through 27, and he said, I'm going to read this. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him first deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me and for my sake shall find it. For what will a man be profited if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what, what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in glory of his Father with his angels, and then recompense every man according to his deeds. Now let's, let's look at this again. What's, what does Jesus mean by take up your cross and follow me? And what is the cross? Well, the cross is an instrument of death. Jesus explains one verse with the next. He, uh, let's look at it again. He says, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And then he says, and here's where he explains it, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. Now to deny oneself is to recoil from, uh, and just, just reject whatever you are. And what about this cross? Now, now the, the Romans used that cross as, a, as an execution instrument. Only a, at a time in, in Jerusalem, in Israel, only Jews were put on, on the cross or, or non-Romans. The only Romans who were, who were ever executed on the cross were traitors. The, that, that thing was, was only for people who were who like the lowest of society. And let's look at the cross for a while because our total redemption rests on the cross. Man cannot save himself. In fact, th that's what all these religions are about, is man trying to find his way back to God. And the key word here is trying. And um, 
God himself says in, in the Psalm 49, uh, verses 7, 8, and 9, No man can by any means redeem his brother, or give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of his soul is costly, and he should cease trying forever. Here's that word again, trying. That he should live on eternally, and that he should not undergo decay. So no man can save himself. So no man can save himself. It's God who tries to, who reaches down to save us. But because we are filthy with sin, he had to choose the only pure, sinless sacrifice that he had, his own son. So I'd like to go through three major points about the cross to, for us to briefly ponder. And they all start with P. The number one point is the pure power of the cross. The pure power of the cross. This bloody instrument of execution and death became pure because of only of who was on it. The pure, sinless Son of God. And just to show uh, how, how brutal that cross was, Psalm 22, uh, Jesus explains himself. Now, you have to believe in the Word of God to understand this. That what he went through on that cross, he says in Psalm 22, verse 14, all the way to 17. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaw. And thou dost lay me in, in the dust of death, for dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil doers has em encompassed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I have counted all my bones. They look and they stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. And this, this was a prophetic messianic prophecy that was fulfilled uh, right in, Cal in Calvary when the Roman soldiers started casting lots for, the, for his clothes. And then right on, on both sides of Jesus, he said, uh, evil doers have, have uh, surrounded me. There were two thieves crucified on both sides of him. So the, the pure power of the cross, the pure Son of God was executed in a brutal fashion on that cross, on that tree. And then there's a propitiation payment of the cross. Propitiation means God demanded a sacrifice of justice for the sins of mankind. And again, it was only the pure Son of God who could pay it. First uh, John chapter 4, verse 10 says, John chapter 4, verse 10 says, For, is, for in this is love, not that we love God, but He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. The word propitiation has, has a connotation of satisfaction, that when God saw His Son died on the cross, on the bloody cross, He was satisfied that all the payment for sin was made. Jesus is the satisfaction of God's justice. And then there's uh, the third point is the powerful peculiarity of the cross. There is the power of the cross, there's the payment of the cross, and there's the peculiarity of the cross. Is there something peculiar about that cross? We will never understand what that means in this life, in this realm, because think about it. The creator of the world di dies rejected and shamed on the cross, and mankind is saved. Now, in the natural realm, that makes no sense whatsoever. But with faith, anything is possible. Uh, in fact, the Bible explains in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the word of the cross is foolishness to them who are dying or perishing. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God unto salvation. This, so the peculiarity of the cross can only be explained by the sacrifice of the cross, the shame of the cross, and the scandal of the cross. It is the foolishness and the rejection of man that led to the Son of God being crucified there, and is that same rejection and shame that leads to our redemption. Redemption is the same, simplest form like this. Um, God redeemed us with a kind of a transaction where, let's say you, uh, he reaches down into the ditch and he picks up these uh, aluminum cans and he turns them into Lake Area Recycling and he gets some, some money back for it. In the basis form, that is, a, that is a simplest analogy that I can find, except that he has given us eternal life through that transaction. And I went through all of this about the cross to show how, how, what a major significant event it is. The cross of Christ is no joke, my friends. 
It is not something to be taken lightly. Jesus says, deny yourself. Jesus says, deny yourself. He says to die to yourself. How do you die to yourself? And, and walk around breathing. Well, you, you, put, you put him first. And then thirdly, he said, decide to become like me. After you've decided to, to become like Christ, you, you, want, you want to deny yourself because the kind of things you think about, the kind of things you do during the day, they're not really uplifting if you think about it. And he's given us the only true way to become his disciple and more importantly for our souls, how to get to heaven. And this leads me to the most crucial point of this program, come back to American Christianity. And given all I've said about the cross, it is crucial for our souls. Think about this thing called postmodernism. The world says, God is a great big mountain and there are many ways to the top. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The world says, do your own thing, whatever, whatever feels good, as long as you don't hurt someone else. Jesus says, if you so much as look at a woman with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery. But it's more serious than that, my friends. Life is short and we don't know how long we have to live. One day we're going to stand before Christ on Judgment Day and to give an account for ourselves. And He's going to ask us, why should I let you into my heaven? What are you going to say? Um, each year at the, at the uh, Illinois State Fair, I worked at, I worked at something called the Godmobile. You, you might have seen it though. When you walk in the gate too at the Illinois State Fair, it's a, there's a booth right, uh, right behind, I think, Ethnic Village that says, and there's a huge sign that says, uh, are you going to heaven? Come take the test. And what we do is we give, uh, we give people a two question test. And one, the first question is, are you going to heaven? And the options are yes, no, and third option is I don't know. And the second question is, if you said yes or no, why did you say that? And there's a whole bunch of options there. And you'd be amazed at some of the answers we get. Um, most people would say, uh, you're going to heaven because I'm a good person. I haven't killed anybody. I don't steal. I don't, uh, I don't hurt anyone. I believe in God. And then we have, and on the back of it, we have a little thing, a little typed up thing that says, every answer you just gave was wrong. Now, now why is it wrong? I mean, those sounds like, those sound like pretty reasonable answers. Um, I don't kill anyone. Well, do you hate, have you ever hated someone? Um, if you hated someone, that's, that's the same as uh, murder. The only thing you haven't done is, is, is actually done something illegal to them. If you've, if you've taken as much as a paper clip or, uh, or a pen from the office, you've stolen something. If you've looked at a woman or, or if you're a woman looking at a man with, uh, with lust in your heart you've co and you're married, you commit adultery. Um, if you tell even one small lie, you're a liar. So therefore, we're lying, thieving, adulterers at heart and, and God's going to judge, judge us on Judgment Day. Now, now, how are we going to get past God's law? In, in a case like that, God's law, God is really exacting about justice. He, he is the judge. Um, if you go speeding through a, uh, a subdivision and you go past the school bus that, with a red light flashing and you, you didn't stop, and the cop pulls you over down the street and gives you a $500 ticket, you have to go pay it in front of a judge. And if, uh, if if some kindly soul is walking by and feels really sorry for you and paid it, the ticket's paid, it doesn't matter how it's paid, but you, you get to walk free. It's the same thing with, uh, with Jesus. He, he, paid, he made the payment for the law on the cross. And even though we are lying, thieving, and adulterers at heart, if we accept that payment from Christ, and, with, and uh, for instance, on Christmas Day, if we open up that gift of Christ, then we're home free in the heaven. So, if, he, if Jesus says on Judgment Day, why shouldn't He let us into heaven? Well, the answer is simple, simply. We recognize we have sinned. We accepted Jesus' death on the cross, His payment, His perfect payment, 
his propitiation, the satisfaction that God gave uh, Saul and, under, and, and accepted for his death on the cross and the sacrifice. And we've trusted in him because there's going to come a day when Jesus is going to say, like he says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. And this is serious, folks. And here's where the American church is in big trouble. Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now what does that mean? And how do you know you're a child of Christ? I mean, many are going to hear on that day, depart from me, I never knew you. And, and like those people who answered those, uh, the quiz at, at the Illinois State Fair, why are they going to heaven? Because they're a good person all that. They, they might have a rude shock coming. And the church, the modern church is to blame for something like this. We, we lead people in simple prayer, uh, say this prayer and, and repeat it after me, and, 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 uh, and you're going to heaven. That's not so, my friend. You have to understand what, why, why, who Jesus is and why he had to die on the cross. And you have to understand the gravity and the depth and the filthiness of our sin that put him on the cross. Because it's going to be a scary day and a very sad day uh, when many who thought they were saved sitting in the pews are cast into the, the, the lake of fire. Now, how do we know that we're saved? Well, we know we're saved by fruit. Jesus himself says, you shall know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles, are they? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, but then you will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their fruits. Now, what are the fruits we're talking about? Well, the fruits we're talking about one thing, you can see it on your faces. Uh, the Bible gives a, a fair definition of what the fruits of the, of the Spirit are. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. Some of the fruits of the Spirit are these. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and also, uh, James also gives another one, good works. Now, good works don't get you into heaven, but the fruit that you're saved is that you want to do good works. You want to help someone else. So, these are the inner things. The inner things are, as we said, patience, love, joy, peace, and kindness. And, and they show in your face that you're a child of God. And the outward things are the good works you perform. Now, Another thing is, uh, another, another way you can show that you're a you son of light is, is by walking in the light. Now, what does that mean? Uh, God is, is described in many parts of the Bible as the father of lights. And um, John, 1 John chapter 1 says, uh, he, John, the apostle John, who had a really close relationship with Jesus, says in verse 5 and onwards, And this is the message we have heard from him and announce to you that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. If, but if we walk in the light, as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not within, within us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we are not sin, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, 
On that day, when we stand on judgment day before the throne, and, and Jesus says to some, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. What does that mean? He, well, that means that those people, or those, uh, those who have received that admonition, were never forgiven. They have broken God's law, and they have not sought forgiveness at the cross. And the, the church in America, modern evangelism, plays a big major part in, in, in deceiving people along that path by, by saying, come, Jesus will make it all right to you. There's a gospel called prosperity gospel where people are taught how to make money and just say, God wants you to be rich and have lots of fine things and nice cars and homes. But they never teach them about the true word, the true repentance that, that's necessary to prosper from the in, in, inside. Sure, God wants you to have good things and, li and live comfortably, but they, they don't manifest themselves in the earthly realm in, in material things. Those are just part of it. So coming back to first base, if we don't get through first base, we haven't scored a thing. We, we could spend our lives running around doing church programs, uh, being a deacon, be, being an elder, even being a pastor, um, teaching Sunday school, doing evangelism, working in homeless missions on the streets, going missionary, work all over the world. But we haven't hot, touched first base by being saved by the full of the cross, by the true repentance. It's all for naught. So, so how do we make sure of that? Well, the Bible says, examine yourself daily. Make sure that you are in the, in the faith. How do you make sure you're in the faith? I mean, even Christians who've been uh, saved for a long time doubt themselves. Sometimes um, we all have the same doubts, but we, but we stick to it. We know who are, from where our strength come, comes from. I, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you have the inner joy of the Lord um, that comes from being saved and being sanctified and a soldier of Christ, there's, there's nothing that can turn you away. There are times you're going to be down and distressed and depressed, but that's that just for a season. You, you turn around and you, look, and you look in the mirror and you say, Hey, I am a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. This, this is not going to take me down. So friends, think about it. Worship the Lord in beauty of holiness. And uh, if you have any questions about this, feel free to email me at plumbline at yahoo.com. Plumbline TV. Sorry. I'll give that email address again. Plumbline TV at yahoo.com. Uh, any questions you have, we'll, we'll, we'll shoot you back an answer. Um, thank you for allowing me into your home this time. We pray that you join us again next time for Plumb Line. I'd like to say a prayer now as, as we close. And Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word, your precious word, which is sealed with, uh, within us until the day of redemption. We pray for, for the city of Springfield and for all the surrounding areas. We pray for our brothers and sisters everywhere, that you bless them and that you show them your truth. Thank you for the cross and thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen.